Hi, my name is Lilika and today we're going to be looking at the literary features of text. This is the last video in a series I've recently been making on the 9093 AS Level English syllabus update in 2021. If you want to check out the rest of the videos that I've been making, do click on the link in the card right now. That'll send you over to the playlist with all of the videos that I've made over the past few weeks. This last bit of the syllabus that I'm covering today covers things like voice, tone, audience, genre, purpose, etc. So if you want to skip forward to whichever part of the video you find most most useful to be at, then make sure to check out the time bar or the timestamps in the description. The voice of a text is a mix of tone, point of view, emotions, attitude and vocabulary that makes the content of a text flow together in a particular manner. The voice of a text can be formal or informal, serious or lighthearted, comical or depressed, persuasive or argumentative, objective versus subjective, etc. The voice of a text directly affects the mood of the text. The same text written with a positive voice will convey the content in a very, very different manner than if it were written with a negative voice, for example. As an example, I'm going to give you two sentences. One is written with a positive voice and one is written with a negative voice. And just listen to hear how big of a difference the voice makes when describing the exact same scene and how that carries across to the reader in different ways. So here's this first sentence. The tall, big-leaved trees of the forest cast their shadows gently overhead. It's a pretty peaceful, it's a positive voice, right? Here's the second sentence. The crooked, looming trees of the forest cast their shadows menacingly overhead. It's a lot darker, right? That's clearly the negative voice. Both of these sentences are describing the same trees of the same forest, but just by using different vocabulary, you can see how that positive and negative voice respectively shines through in each of these sentences. There are different types of voice. The first type of voice that you will see in text is the voice of the narrator. The voice of the narrator expresses the attitude of the narrator through which the story is directly being told. The narrative perspective of the text will affect the voice of the narrator. For example, a first person narrator may be more directly involved and invested in the story versus a third person narrator who might be more objective. Either way, the narrator is who the audience hears the story from, so it directly affects the way they view the content of the text. The second type of voice that you will find in text is the voice of the author. This expresses the attitude of the author themselves. Even if the story is being told through a narrator, the author's voice can still shine through. The voice the voice of the author will be most prominent in non-fiction texts, for example, news articles where the outlet is presumably objective. However, often the opinions and ideas of the news outlet are clearly shown in the writing. The third type of voice that you'll find is the voice of a character. The author may choose to give each character their own unique voice that expresses their unique personality and their take on the events in the story. The voice of a character will be the most prominent in fiction writing. The author may choose to tell the story through the perspective of many characters. For example, in Heroes of Olympus, where in each chapter, the story is being told through the perspective of a different character and each unique voice that the characters have shines through in their respective chapters. As aforementioned, the voice of a text directly affects the way the reader experiences the story. It is always important to consider the voice of a text that you are reading, analyzing or writing. The tone of a text is the overall feel or emotion of the text. The tone of a text is directly affected by the vocabulary choices of the author. It affects the way the text makes the reader feel. For example, the tone of a text can be regretful, joyous, cynical, sarcastic, uneasy, inspirational, or facetious. In each of these different examples, it would be the specific vocabulary choices that the author makes, primarily when it comes to adjectives and the negative and positive connotations that the reader would have to said adjectives that will really affect the tone of the text and the way that the story kind of comes across to the reader. The audience of a text determines what kind of voice will be conveyed in the text. The more you understand your audience, the more effectively you will be able to connect with them. So you need to really identify your audience when you're writing a text. For example, what age range are there? Are they older folk or younger folk? So specific slang words, for example, wouldn't carry across very well when it comes to people who were born in a different generation than, you know, us teens, for example. Cultural context is definitely also very important. In some cultures, something that is very commonplace and 
maybe a, a normal greeting that we have in our language or in our culture could be something that's very rude in a different culture. So cultural context is very important to consider when you're writing a text. For AS level English, of course, cultural context doesn't matter as much because you can assume that you're writing for an English speaking audience, but it's still just good to know if you're ever writing any other piece of text. The individual ideology of your readers will also have a big effect on the specific voice that you will try to kind of carry across in your uh, through your writing. For example, if you are writing towards a more conservative audience, you must be respectful of their beliefs and also understand that they are going to read your text through a specific lens, namely conservatism. So you must consider the way they will perceive your words and make sure that you communicate it in a way that effectively and accurately comes across as what you're actually trying to say. The level of education of your audience is also something you can consider. For example, if they have a lower level of education or maybe they're just younger, maybe you're writing for kids, it might be better to try to use words that are simpler and make more sense to a younger audience, for example. Also, when you are identifying your audience, it is good to consider their prior familiarity with the topic. How much information do you need to give them to give them a foundation to understand what you're actually saying in your text? For example, if you're writing about climate change or something, you can't assume that most people know the bare basics about climate change. You might need to give them introductory information so that they can actually understand what you're about to say in your text. After that, you just need to try to appeal to your audience. So you can choose whether you're going to be more formal or informal, whether you're going to be more conversational or more factual, whether you're going to be more educative or more entertaining. That all depends on the specific audience that you're writing for. And again, the more you understand your audience, the more effectively you can connect and communicate with them. So it's important that you always consider the audience when you are reading, writing or analyzing a text. The genre of a text generally will define the purpose of the text. For example, descriptive pieces mean to evoke the reader's senses and emotions through specific vocabulary use and sentence structure. Analytical pieces mean to pick apart and understand the logic behind something or the credibility of it, as well as to inform. Argumentative pieces mean to directly oppose a certain point of view and impose the author's point of view on the reader in contrast to it. Comical pieces aim to entertain the reader and take their mind off of things. So whenever you're trying to figure out the purpose of a text, you can just look at the genre of the text and that already give you a lot of clues about what the purpose of the author's writing may be. And if you're asked to write a specific type of text with a specific type of purpose, you can also pick the correct genre for the text that you will be writing. The purpose of a text is simply the reason the author wrote the text. A text may have more than one purpose, but one specific purpose will tend to stand out above the rest. When determining purpose, here are a few questions you can ask. Does the text offer factual information? Then its purpose is probably to inform. Does the text tell us how something works? Then its purpose is probably to explain. Does the text contain a list of steps to accomplish a specific task? Then its purpose is probably to instruct. Does the text contain sensory features that help the reader create a mental picture? Then its purpose is probably to describe. Does the text contain poetry, a story, or is it a novel? Then its purpose is probably to entertain. Does the text contain reasoning or does it encourage the reader to do something? Then its purpose is probably to persuade. Next up, let's talk about modality. Verbs tell the reader what is happening in a sentence. Modal verbs tell the reader about the degree of certainty or obligation that is involved in the action. So modality can be expressed through the choice of verbs, adverbs and adjectives in a sentence. A sentence can be of low versus high modality. Low modality shows less importance, impact, certainty, obligation, confidence and emphasis. High modality shows a greater extent of these. For example, in this table you can see some words that have high, medium and low modality. Must is a high modality term. It expresses absolute certainty. The word will has medium modality. It still expresses certainty, but not to the degree that the word must does. Then the word may has very low modality. There isn't a lot of certainty tied to the word, nor is there a lot of obligation tied to the word. A better understanding of modality and vocabulary will help you be able to communicate which parts of your text are of more or less importance and help you place an emphasis on the parts of your text that are of more importance. Pragmatics is the study of what an author implies via situational context 
connotation, syntax, the preceding dialogue and its relationship to what the reader infers. Pragmatics incorporates the context of an utterance to determine the meaning. A good example is the phrase, how are you? Generally, the recipient won't respond, you know, with their entire life story. Instead, the common response is, fine, how are you? This is a pragmatic response because you presuppose that the phrase was meant as a greeting rather than a directed question. A better understanding of pragmatics will help you give the correct amount of detail when needed and understand when you assume that the audience understands what you're saying and maybe when you're incorrect in assuming that as well as help you have a better understanding of how much context clues and information you need to give the audience for them to be able to infer what you want them to infer out of the text that you're writing. I know that for most of you, it's exam time at the date of the release of this video. So if you want to learn about ways you can study for exams, click over here. Also, if you're curious about the ACE Level English syllabus, click over here for the playlist that I've made. If you like this video, do like it. If you love this video, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And you can always unsubscribe later. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one and good luck on your studying journey. Family, familiar, familiarity, 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 familiarity.